What's up, guys? I'm Maddie Noyes, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Maddie, I'm so excited to finally get to talk to you. I've been a fan since Noise Complaint dropped, and your voice is really what really drew my attention. Like you have this kind of unique kind of sound to your to your vocals. Um, so I guess just off the bat, like where did that, where did you kind of discover your voice uh, when you first started like working on music? That's a really good question. I. Um... Grew up always loving music. My dad played a lot of like classic 60s, 70s rock. I always obsessed like the Beatles. They were the first um, musicians to really, really blow my mind and spark my interest. Like as a young child, I was really into Johnny Cash and his songwriting abilities. And also this more that really inspired me. Like when I was a kid, the first song I ever remember hearing and remembering was ironic because the lyrics were just so unique and I think I was probably four or five years old and it came on and I was in the backseat of a car and I just remember thinking this story that she's telling is incredible and it just sparked something in my brain and I really wanted to do that so when I was like 12 I had one of those little iPods that was green and I would just listen to the Beatles in my bed at night and pretend like I knew how to like play guitar (laughs) and then next thing I know like my parents are getting me a guitar and a week later I'm just writing songs so it happened really fast and I never expected it but all those people had a huge influence on me for sure. You don't like you wouldn't think that uh, that was your specific um the specific music that you would listen that you were listening to like and i i love that because i know like sometimes i've talked to artists that you can automatically tell like who their influences are but with you like i can't and i love that um (laughs) now as we move move on to your debut album um it's been you know you've been in the game for some time you've had a few releases already like eps um and you've also been behind the scenes with songwriting and vocals So leading up to this record, um, why did you feel now was the perfect timing for a debut album? Well, actually, I didn't. I felt many years ago (laughs) was the perfect timing. Debut album. Sadly, I have the classic artist story of getting caught up in deals and having to wait on many people's opinions and timelines. And it's a real bummer. Um that I'm still trying to figure out and defeat in my life. You know, my whole life I've written so many songs at this point. I've probably written maybe 12 albums or more easily. You know, like all my friends around me that are close to my family, we all know the songs, we all love them. And they're all up to date in my life. But it's really hard being behind with the world because you almost have an imposter syndrome because you're kind of promoting stuff that's been done for years. And with this album in particular, um, it had been done for two full years before it came out and it was supposed to come out um, back in 2019, 2019 or 2020. So it's a huge relief to get it out because I feel like, A weight has been lifted and I can start putting out all the music I've been working on during that I feel like I've grown into and I'm so excited about and it's the person I am today. So now it's like just an uphill excitement of finally um, Mm. showing people where I'm at now with music. That's crazy. And that's I mean, that's the reality of the music industry, too. Like a lot of us as music fans don't really realize that you know, it's not always up to the artist. Like you can have a record done for years before you can finally get the okay to release it. Um, and Wild. I'm, yeah. yeah, it's insane. And I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that like you kept going. Like I know there's been times with other artists where they're just like, I can't do this. Like, but you kept it going. You released this record, 16 tracks and every track is just incredible. And like, I love yeah. that. <laughs> I love that you worked with, different producers within the entire album but it still gives me that cohesiveness of of an entire record so how did you go about that because i feel like that must be a challenge in itself 
Well, I think that when you're a really hands-on artist like I am, I have so much to do with um, the creative of everything. I'm not the kind of girl that's like, and no, no shame to the artists that are. It's just not me. Um, I can never be like, send me songs. I need to cut them. Give me video ideas. Give me photo shoots. I'm always the one styling everything, writing the concepts, going into the studio with something I need to get off my chest. And when I work with different people, I can kind of steer them within the studio and say, these are the sounds I like. These are the sounds I don't like. Um, but, you know, I I feel like the world is opening their mind lately for people like me. My vision in this industry is to innovate and to put out albums that range from multiple genres. I have been told my whole life that I can only be one thing to be understood, that I have to be put in a box, but I don't believe that's true anymore. I'm tired of the old way of thinking. And I think with this album, it goes to slowly prove where I'm headed, to see that it can range from pop to other soulful genres. And with this next album I have coming out, it ranges between four to five genres, but it all still flows. So it's really that there's something for everyone. It's so that you're never getting bored with the sound. And it all is me. It all is genuine. So it's not like this, you know, conjumbled mess. It really is my heart and soul put into music genuinely. As far as being genuine, like I, I get this major sense of vulnerability throughout this record. And, yeah. you know, as an artist, there's some artists that say, you know, they're an open book. And it's, it's always been that way and it's easy, but there's other artists that struggle opening up to their audience. So yeah. for you, like what was, you know, knowing or getting vulnerable on this entire record, like, was that something that came natural or was that something that you kind of had to work at before you can be comfortable doing it? I think the majority of the human experience for people is like quite like as humans were made to, oh, we have to feel silly about this or embarrassed or shameful about something um, or uncomfortable or, or whatever. But I have always kind of like offered my life to the greater sacrifice of music. And if that means sharing uncomfortable stories or opening up to help other people feel comfortable, I'm so more than happy and willing to do that because I feel like that's why I was put here. So for me, it's not a challenge. It's not hard for me. I just know that it's part of the price to pay to what I was brought here to do, which is give people music. So I'm down for it. I kind of think, you know, a lot of the stuff people get upset or worried about in the world is quite silly. Um, I have a, interesting perspective on life so it helps me kind of cope and manage maybe better in ways than other people would you know because I kind of look at things um comedically a lot of times it helps me uh process things with humor I'm a I'm a big one of those people and yeah music has helped me like hyper analyze my life and heal through things and understand myself um in a way that most people can't it's an outlet that literally allows you if you're being honest and writing about the stories that are happening every day like it allows you to really look at yourself and figure yourself out in a really powerful way so it's pretty crazy as far as being able to tell these stories especially for this this album the feelings mutual um did you did you already have an identity like did you know like coming into the writing process of this record did you know this was the record you were writing or did the identity kind of show up during the like the actual writing process i think the identity kind of showed up because for like five or six years all i've been doing is being in la writing right so i've just been having song 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 songs but the idea of this album is that every single song is pretty much and not that all of my stuff is like this but for some reason with this album every song was about the people i had been in love with and the lessons i learned from them so it ranges from a state of the first person I was in love with, which was very, that's who man needs woman was about. It was a very like on and off relationship that taught me a lot when I came to LA. 
Um, it ranges from going through that on and off to my first really serious, healthiest relationship to that breaking up to being single again for a while and navigating falling in love with the dude I'm currently with. So it kind of is this time span of this love that went on. And I feel like a lot of people are afraid of love, but for me, I'm so open to it that I've learned just, it's been like being able to mirror myself and learn a lot through other people through love because you can get so deep through love you know in other ways that you can't with other kind of relationships would you say that it was it was uh, there was a big difference writing songs of past experiences compared to writing songs that you're currently living in the present well a, a lot of it i was writing presently so hmm. um yeah it's just like i said it just took years to get it out <laughs> <laughs> The time we ended up choosing it all and getting it all together, yeah, most of most of everything was written as it was happening, and it was just like, okay, these wow. are the ones, these are the ones, and they all happen to be about these three people I've been in love with. One of the songs is about a friend breakup, but all the other ones are about love. Yeah. Now, there's so many different cadences cadences throughout this this record. Um, how did that? go about for you? Was that something that happened in the studio with said producers or was that something that happened during the writing process? I think a lot of that just happens naturally in the room. Like if someone will just play the right chords, I'll just get on the mic and things will start flowing out and it feels like it comes together so quickly and you kind of know, like deep down, you know, you're like, oh, that's the part. That's the part. Ooh, that's the part. And if it doesn't really flow like that, a lot of times I've found that sometimes you do have to work for a song and you really have to go in and find the parts. But my favorite kind of songs are the ones that just something plays something comes over you you feel it you let it flow and it just happens and i think a lot of artist approaches they go into stuff like oh i need a song oh i need a hit oh i need something like this but i i never have that approach i have the approach of like it's above me it's beyond me it's a god thing i i'm here as a channel i'm here to listen i'm here to receive um it's already there use me thank you thank you kind of vibes so i think i kind of have this more um less pressured approach than a lot of artists do and i think it's just really fun to make music <laughs> i feel i feel like that i feel like that makes it a challenge though just because you could be getting a lot of energy with like new material constantly and then there could be some dry spells as well um do you find that happening a lot with you? It's kind of, it's kind of, um, you know, I think when I used to, my approach was like, I would be in the studio every day with tons of different producers. And mm. that was cool because I got so many songs and I learned so much, but lately I've just been letting them come to me when I want and only working with a few people. And I, I really like that approach too. So I don't know if I would call it, a dry spell as much as like I'm just waiting for the melodies to come like a lot of times now when I'm writing I'll just wake up in the morning <laughs> at like 7 a.m I might like hit a joint and I'll just lay there in silence and just sometimes melodies will come through in the silence and lately finding those kind of melodies have been like my favorite way to make music so definitely expect more of that in the future just like and, and I've been bringing those into the studio lately, just like one little melody that came to me in the silence and built a song around it. And that's really cool, too, because usually I would go in just blank, start from scratch. But it's kind of nice coming in every now and then with an idea if someone can really see it through and love it as much as you do. Now, as far as these 16 tracks, I mentioned there's various producers on, on the entire album. So yeah. was there one particular producer that challenged you the most whether it was vocally instrumentally or even in the writing process hmm. that's a really good question <sighs> to be honest um a lot of the producers kind of just let me come in and do my thing <laughs> and they don't really question it much because i am a very sweet um girl but when i'm in the studio I turn into a boss mode and it's kind of usually just people catching what I'm throwing um, and accepting that and loving that. 
and experiencing that. But what I will say, more than producers, there was a co-writer. Uh, and I don't mean to say this just to sound cheesy because people shout out people they love, but my boyfriend does music and writes with me. And he is a brutal, brutally honest person. He's from Brooklyn, New York. He's a savage. And he would always be the one to be just so honest with me and be like, oh, that that drum sounds horrible. Like, oh, you got to fix that. Like, oh, that, you know, that doesn't make any sense. And he would tell to me really straight with songs. And we did two songs on the album together. So he really helped. You know, he would fight me on stuff. I would say, oh, I don't like that melody there. Oh, I don't like that. That I like it how it is. And, and he would fight me until it was the best. So I do appreciate people like that in my life that are close to me that aren't just yes people, but are just brutally honest, even if it hurts a little. Like I'm from Mississippi, so, you know, all my friends are from New York, so they have a more uh, brash way of putting things than I do. But I've learned in time to really appreciate that and value it. I'm going to go on a whim and say Love Don't Cost a Thing was one of those songs. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got Weathen to produce as well on that track as well. So talk to me about that collaborative process for that song in particular, just because there was four different, maybe more different heads creating this, this, uh, this track. That song was just such another day that never could, you know what I mean? Like it was such a song that no one ever thought would really turn into anything. I was there in the studio with Lemitre. At the time, I didn't even know who Weathen was, which is crazy because he's like the most crazy talented producer in the world. Like he's so good. I would love to get in with him again. But at this time, he was super quiet and young. He just kind of snuck in. He was late and he was just doing some stuff in the corner. I, didn't, I just thought he was another like cool, young, nerdy, cool producer, you know, whatever. But um, later I found out that guy's crazy like mad nice mad. <laughs> and yeah um it was just me on the track at first and then frankie and i started dating and he was an artist and i wanted to do something with him i wanted to kind of bring our love story that was happening to life in real time with music and make videos about it and make something that felt like a movie in my life really be a movie you know so I talked to him in the beginning on the song. He loved the song and he added some new parts. And yeah, at first, like there was some stuff he did where I was like, nah, that's not right. And then later on listening more and more, it became like one of my favorite parts of the songs. Like when he goes, I'm a ticking time bomb to I figure it out. Still I'm spinning backwards. I just been in love and I need a slow don't you ever go. Oh, like all that. I was like, at first I was like, cause I never heard it. I was like, oh, what? That sounds like after like many listens, me and the label were both like, oh, that's actually nasty good. We love it. That must be amazing being able to have this collaboration with someone that you personally love and like not only it being a collaboration, but being a song about yourselves, about your relationship, about everything going on. So how much more of an impact did that have on your writing process when that was happening? It was had a huge impact because at the same time it was happening and it was like just happening. Well, that song we made, we kind of got to know each other more. And when it started coming out, like that's when it started happening. And that was the week we started dating. So it kind of put us in this headspace of like, let's just hole up in the studio together, fall in love and like make a ton of That's, so, that's such a, like a movie, like going on. <laughs> it, it really allows a level of like comfortability and um, just limitless uh, exploration that you don't get in just the average, Oh, I'm going to show up to a session with someone I barely know. And I'll be there until like five, six, seven PM, whatever. It was like, no, we're going to, just lay on the ground and like with the microphone and let some things play and just get weird and try stuff. And it's really nice making music like that. And I think it's also set me up for like, I want to be in a relationship with someone who also does what I do and loves what I do. Because when you're able to do that together, 
it makes it so much more powerful because there's nothing I love more than love and music. So to have both together, it's like the craziest feeling ever. And that's all what I'm all about. Those deep, deep, deep feelings that get you those crazy songs and emotions and all that. So definitely, uh, definitely love that. Love being with someone who does what I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> like, seriously, such a movie vibe. <laughs> like, I could be with, like, no offense, but, like, you know, someone with a normal job because when you're both doing music, you can hang out all the time and actually be Productive. making stuff. For instance, like, if I was dating someone who didn't do music, when I hang out with them, we're just going to be, oh, maybe we go on a hike. Maybe we watch TV. Maybe we you know, go bowling or something. I don't know. But it's, it's a lot of free time that's spent doing just stuff. And I don't really like to waste a lot of time doing just stuff like that. I like to spend a lot of time being creative. So if there's someone I can be creative with, it's almost like you're getting to hang out all the time. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, no, I get you completely. I'm I'm the same way. It's like I can't with my girlfriend like she is also she's in the film world so mm -hmm. she's also a creative um i do independent stuff as well so it's like this is the first time in a long time that i've felt like everything that we do everything that we think about we're on that same page because we understand each other's mm -hmm. you know daily activities or daily routines or whatever like so i totally get you on that yeah it's like things can't really get boring because there's always that music exactly and to go to and do and get excited about so exactly exactly yeah. and that's and some, amazing some music babies come from it something lives on from it it's not just yeah. a memory of a night you know it's like we can listen to this forever from what we did that night yeah that's yeah. so cool that's mm -hmm. so cool like and i'm excited because i feel like yeah like you said like there's definitely gonna be more coming out of this um so now as far as like and I guess this song could be a great example because you're having those moments together. The butter, the butterflies obviously come in and out throughout the process. So you being able to control your vocals and not just on that song, but on the entire record, because there's different melodies and tracks on the tracks. So how do you go about as far as like controlling your voice? And was there a particular song that you felt like the control was a little harder than the rest? You mean like harder to sing? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I never really think about it until after, and then you have to sing it live, and you're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't put any breaths in this song. Like, the whole song, I'm just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I think when you're in the studio, you, your main focus is just to make sure that the key is really good so that it's, like, something you can easily glide on. So that's something I always be sure to be really... Um, careful about making sure the key is perfect for me but usually you don't know which songs are going to be the ones that are hard for you until afterwards and you have to get up and sing them and when it hits you and I haven't had to perform these live yet so I don't really know but what I could say is the songs like time and say are easier for me to sing than songs that are um you know maybe more fast or poppy with no breath you know, I'm really, I go better on the soulful, easy stuff, <laughs> naturally. Well, congratulations with this album. Uh, it was definitely worth the wait. I mean, for me, it was worth the wait. I'm sure the same for you. <laughs> and I'm excited to hear more from you. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. Hopefully we get to experience this on a live setting soon and, and get to like see the cinematics from this album. Yeah, that's definitely something that's my next step I'm working on. So I'm definitely spending a lot of time going in and thinking about that live show and wanting to make it better than anything I've done before and make it a real experience for people. So a lot of meditating is going into that right now. Yeah.